tout le monde pour votre présence dans ce panel qui est un petit peu impromptu. Je pense qu'on devait avoir une autre présentation, mais il y a toujours des changements de dernière minute. Alors, merci de votre présence. Et puis aujourd'hui, ce qu'on voulait faire, c'est un panel qui, euh, ben, qui m'est très cher. On m'a demandé parce que je suis impliqué dans le français, je suis impliqué dans le multilinguisme. Et puis, euh, mais aujourd'hui, ce n'est pas moi qui va parler. Aujourd'hui, c'est mes invités qui vont parler. And yes, this panel will be fully multilingual. So we'll be speaking French, English, and that's it, because I don't speak a third language. I'm sorry about that. All right. Uh, and um, my guests will also have the opportunity to speak in the language of their choice to switch, as we do often in Montreal, from French to English in the same sentence, if they so desire as well. So without further ado, and we've got a number of questions, uh, I'd like to introduce you to Alex Ruo. I'd like to introduce you to Mike Dixon, as well as Jonathan Perlman. And my first question is going to be very easy, starting for with Alex coming all the way over here, would be uh, the very simple question, how long have you been thinking uh, and doing multilingual uh, in the WordPress ecosystem? Uh, ever since I started building websites, I, I'm not from Quebec, but I have lived here for the last nine years. I've been building websites for six years and almost, yeah, from the get-go, I was building bilingual websites uh, for Quebec clients. Uh, let me check what time it is. <laughs> uh, I do a lot of websites for, you know, I live in Ottawa and I am unilingual, so if you ask me a question in French, it's going to go like this. But um, I do uh, websites for nonprofits and um, charities and stuff like that in Ottawa, and they all have to be multilingual. So I've been doing it for years. So I work at uh, Dawson College, and uh, while Dawson College is the largest CGEP, not just largest English language CGEP, uh, we do have to have a presence of uh, bilingual information for our HR departments, our finance departments, and uh, we do host other satellite sites which are uh, bilingual, actually trilingual, not just bilingual. So uh, we've been doing WordPress uh, for since about 2013. Therefore, we've had multilingual on our main website, and specifically, the uh, the trilingual site was uh, spun up a few years ago. Thank you. Now um, I know you've seen a list of questions. I'm going to start changing them right away on you. Uh, I'm curious, because my first WordCamp here was in 2010, and uh, right away I knew that I had to do multilingual. By the way, anyone feel free to interrupt him with a question, because <laughs> I, I don't trust his ability to mangle these questions. Okay, next one's in French for you, Mike. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I've been, uh, I've been doing that for a while, and it used to be there were only a few tools that we could actually use to do multilingual with techniques. Could you tell me what was the first way you tried doing multilingual and how did it work for you? Your first ever project, if you can remember that, starting with Jonathan. Um, at this point, we've taken a look at all the major plugins. So being uh, at an institution with all very large websites, we don't like to install plugins. Um, we, we choose our plugins very carefully and we've we found that um, most of the major plugins kind of um, make a mess of the information, make a mess of the post content. Therefore, at that point, we've gone the multi the word the the multi site approach and uh, different pages, different languages, because then our content remains intact and there's going to be a lot less uh, cleanup of possible short codes or possible ways of it storing the information down the road. And we need our content to be portable in, in many different ways so that we can reuse it in, uh, on, in various ways and be portable from dis different systems. So I'm just going to ask Jonathan a question to clarify. When you say messing up the data, you mean how it's stored in the database? Uh, no, how it's stored in post content because at that point, uh, some of the plugins, uh, what they'll do is they'll store the English and the French in literally one post, one page. And then visually, what they'll do is they'll basically uh, show you only the English, only the French, only the other language. But internally in that content, you've got all three languages, all, all as many languages as you're supporting, you've got those languages in one post content. 
And for us, that's a problem whereby down the road we might want to take it and bang and use it in another way, and it's a lot harder to work with. Was anyone here at my talk yesterday on WPML? All right, you remember the core concept that I started with? That's right. So uh, I looked briefly at some of the other plugins as well as long as as well as multi-site, and I landed on WPML uh, mainly because I have yet to find something that it can't translate. And to speak to your point, everything is its own object, so there is no uh, mangling like that. I know what you're talking about with short codes and all that nonsense, but that's that's just not what WPML does. So um, I looked briefly at the other ones, Polylang, and there's another one out there that's floating around that I can't remember the name of right now, but WPML. Uh, is the one that I found that no matter what I tried to translate, I could get it to work. So I just stuck with that. I'm, I'm a small business person. I'm not an experimenter with trying to prove something to myself. I'm going to take what I find that works and go with that, the best solution I can find. Uh-oh, here we go. Back row again. Yeah, so, so the question is, I'll okay. so the question is basically, uh, what are the criteria by which you judge which technical solution or approach you'll use to do a multilingual website? And Mike's about to give us the answer. <laughs> well, you were about to reply, so I figure I just prepped it for you. I'm just giving you on a silver platter. Yes, this is the answer. Um, the answer is there is no answer. Um, it's a, um, the last time I looked at Polylang was a couple of years ago, and I'm sure it's quite different now. Uh, one of the criteria I'm looking at is um, how easy it is for the easy stuff to be translated and how much of a mess it's going to make of the database in the process of doing that. Because I, I, when I release a site to a client, um, unless they've hired me to be the manager of that site, they have admin privileges on, the, on their own site. Because of that, I don't want them to have to go hunting through some weirdo menu or have to keep something in their head, oh yeah, I have to do it this way, in order for them to get between English and French or whatever. And um, so the, the admin um, experience is one of those things that I'm looking at when I evaluate that. If you're asking me why I chose WPML over Pilot Lang years ago, I honestly, I don't remember. Alex? So my answer is actually very much the same as Mike's. I used WPML um, when I had to make my first decision, and I've, by preference, always used that uh, continually since then. Uh, I'm just going to use a couple, uh, do a couple of definitions for, in case anyone doesn't know what's WPML. Uh, WordPress Multilingual is a plugin that helps you make uh, the site bilingual, trilingual, multilingual. Um, Polylang we've thrown about around. That's another plugin. Uh, it's a free plugin. I think it's completely free. Uh, X Translate uh, is another plugin if it's still around. Um, and then Jonathan was mentioning multi-site, which is um, a WordPress um, default where you can have uh, multiple um, sites within your single uh, installation. So to answer the question, um, yes, like my WPML does not mangle the data as it's stored in the database, um, X-Translate and Polylang, which I've used um, where generally I've inherited a site that is already in existence and the client's already using those and there are ways, but it is very difficult to change from those to, say, WPML um, or a multi-site because the data is um, uh, stored with additional information. So, yeah, WPML, uh, unfortunately, they've just, like, within the last couple of months, stopped their uh, lifetime um, package. So you used to be able to pay, I think it was 300 bucks for as many sites as you like, lifetime support, etc. 
they've just stopped doing that, sadly. Um, so I think they're now on to uh, annual packages, and obviously there's single use, single site, a few sites, developer, whatever. Um, so yeah, it was, it's well worth the money. As Mike said, um, I don't think I've ever come across something that I can't translate using WPML. And uh, one thing that, as you say, is important is if your client is gonna be editing the sites, um, it is very good at keeping uh, French and English separate. So for example, Polylang, it mixes up the French and English pages in your list of pages. So then you have to hunt through French and English to find the site, find the page. WPML keeps everything separate. So unknowingly, you've sort of opened the door. Uh, didn't know that we'd have to go there, but I'm just wondering now, starting with Jonathan, and, and it may apply less to you, but still I'd like to hear your thoughts on this, but um, if somebody comes to you, um, friend or professional, and they're asking for your help, and you've agreed to help them professionally to fix their site, and they're using a method for multilingual with which you either uh, are not familiar with or disagree with. Um, what do you do? <laughs> well, at that point, if the friend or professional is asking you to help out with the site, ideally there's a contract behind that and that's associated to some uh, sort of remuneration. So therefore, because there's a contract and money involved, you look up the documentation for the plugin and or the method and you do the best job that you can do uh, because then that, that support, even though you don't know what you're doing, you will at that point uh, put the effort in and then therefore you ideally will get a good referral and a good, uh, you know, that'll generate you uh, some sort of business hopefully down the road. So therefore you definitely look at the documentation of the plugin and the, and the, the way of doing things and uh, you, uh, also, you can also ask within, especially the Montreal uh, Facebook community, uh, you can definitely ask for that support there because of the fact that uh, multilingual, especially in Quebec, is a big topic. So therefore, there are a lot of other people out there that are there willing to support and help out on specific situations and so on. Thank you. Mike, what would you do? Never say if no, only say how much. <laughs> Good advice. That's all. <laughs> Short and sweet. Um, yeah, pretty much like uh, if someone's come to me and they have in the past and they have another way of doing multilingual, I now have experience with several different plugins and multi site for, mul for bilingual, multilingual, uh, because I've always said yes um, and I've learned the ways of doing it. I, if I'm building a site from scratch or I'm redoing a site, then I will always recommend to the client that um, I do it with WPML. It's what I'm most familiar with, I'm most proficient with, and personally, I find it the best way to do a multilingual site. Um, but if the client is coming to me and they have a site and they're using Polylang or it's a multi-site or whatever, then um, I say yes, I say how much, um, and because of that, I now have experience with many different ways of doing it. Thank you. Um, that's an easy one. Um, what percentage of your clients or requests would you say require multilingual? In Quebec, uh, pretty much every site uh, that I built for a Quebec client. I am ashamed to say my own site is not bilingual partly because I'm not bilingual, but every site I've built for a client in Quebec has been bilingual. Um, some sites that I've built for clients outside of Quebec, uh, so in Europe or um, in the States even, um, some of them have been bi or trilingual. Um, so I would say 80% of all sites that I've built uh, are at least bilingual. So 80% about, okay. Jonathan, an opinion on that? Um, personally, um, we're lo I'm working on a site that we're gonna be making bilingual down the road. Uh, professionally, uh, in my day job, at this point, while Alex is 80%, I'm actually less than 20% because of the fact that Dawson College, as I said, is an English language institution, and we do fall under other rules by the government. Therefore, because we can dodge a bullet, we are definitely dodging the bullet. So, yeah. 
Okay. Do what you need, not what, uh, yeah. Mike? Um, none of the American clients I have are multilingual. And of the, uh, all the nonprofits are, so I would say about uh, half to three quarter of the Canadian clients I have are, three quarter, are multilingual. Can I just want to add one comment to my uh, reply? The clients that are not bilingual um, are usually, like, and anyone who um, is in Canada but they're not bilingual, usually it's a conscious decision because they are not happy or they're not able to provide their services in that second language. So myself, um, I'm not able to speak French with any proficiency, sadly, not yet. Um, so I have kind of not translated my site because I don't want to give the impression that I could provide the service in French. Uh, I think you should probably ask a Quebec francophone how they feel about that, but that's All kind of... you had one of those. <laughs> how do you feel about that? How do I feel about that? <laughs> I'm here to ask the questions. <laughs> Um, no, seriously though, uh, unknowingly you also opened another door. Um, since you speak mostly English now, um, but you do 80% of your client's sites in French, who translates for you? So I do not do content for my clients. Um, I'm a big believer in building on your strengths and letting the others who have, uh, <laughs> who have uh, a strength to build on that, so I don't do the copy or the content for my clients. So either the client provides the, um, the English and the French, usually, or the, the three languages for some sites, or I have translators that I've worked with um, who uh, I can say, here's the English, please go and use the French, or please provide the French translation. And just to add on to that, another benefit of using WPML is it actually has a translation manager built into it. You can so WPML is not just one plugin. There is one core plugin, but then there are additional plugins. So if you're doing, you're using WooCommerce, you can have a um, WooCommerce um, WPML plugin that will help translate that specifically. There's a, I think there's a Yoast SEO and WPML plugin. There is also, sorry. Oh yeah, Advanced Custom Fields ACF plugin also has the same um, additional plugin for WPML. One of the other WPML plugins is Translation Management, and it enables you to mark posts, pages, content on your website for, for translation. You can add other users, so for example, your translator can be added as a user on the site. You can assign them the content to be translated, you can set like deadlines, etc. You can track how the translation is going, how they're doing, how many pages they've done, have they done 70% or only 5%. Um, so they can do the translation directly on the site, which I find saves time because then they don't send you a Word document or a PDF and you have to do copy and paste. They actually enter the translations uh, on the site. Mike, do you hire translators as well to do those, uh, that copy or? No, exactly the same. Uh, tran doing the actual translation is somebody else's problem. What I'm doing is providing the ability for the site to be translated. That, and, and that bears pointing out as well. None of these plugins are machine translators. All they do is provide the ability for a translation to be done. They don't do the translation for you. But yeah, the, the actual entering of the content is the client problem. Okay. And in the case of Dawson College, do you have French-speaking people, I assume, that do <laughs> We have this? an entire French department. Uh, meanwhile, that French department doesn't do the translation for Dawson. Uh, we do have a communications team, and they're completely bilingual. Therefore, again, echoing Mark's uh, statement, as IT, from the IT perspective, we provide the platform. And then at that point, we hand off the platform to communications uh, and or the user because, as an example, we've got a Confucius Institute site. And uh, while French and English is a Quebec standard language, they also have a Mandarin site. They've got Mandarin language on their website. And um, while we can probably make out English and French, Mandarin is something you just have to understand and know. So therefore, when we're putting content in or they're putting content in, again, it's just it's the user that has to do the content. And as I said, in terms of just French and English, we have a communications team for that. 
Thank you. Um, here's a question that's going to be fun to answer. Um, tell me a story about uh, an issue or a major pitfall in any project of your liking where things really went south. Uh, oh. Have fun. Okay, so um, I would say it's in general a major pitfall of WPML. It's a little bit less so now. It used to be with WPML you had to write your content in English and then translate to a second, third, fourth language. That has changed recently. You can write your content in English, Spanish, Arabic, Mandarin, whatever, and translate to not even English anymore. Um, but I find I have problems usually when I'm educating my clients on how to uh, update, change, add to their content. Um, there is a certain workflow and a certain education of users in how to go about using, uh, say, WPML for translation. So uh, it can get a bit messy if you, you write a page in English and translate to French and somebody else starts writing it in French and translates to English, or you have... Um, uh, categories, etc., that you've set up in English, and then somebody sets up new categories in French. Um, everything with WPML should be a translation of, usually, I would say, your primary language. So, if you are going to use WPML, pick your primary language and do everything in that primary language and make everything else a translation. You are not entering an English version, a French version, a Spanish, a whatever version you are always translating into the second, third, fourth languages. Uh, and that also goes like themes, plugins, etc. WPML, uh, admin text, all of that can be translated with WPML, but it gets messy when people do not translate, they start making new categories. Because one of the beauties of WPML is on the front end, it's very seamless. Somebody, uh, I know, is on a English category page, they use the language switcher, they go to the French category page, it's, it's the same category just with the translations. It's not a whole new one, you don't have to relink things. So that is a recurring pitfall um, with WPML when, um, when my clients are then using it for the first few times. Mike, last week's episode, <laughs> the week prior. Um, what I spent most of last week doing was uh, taking two Drupal 7 sites and a Drupal 8 site, all with three different languages, extracting the content and merging them into one WordPress site. Um, that was not fun, um, but it worked. And this is it, it was tricky and it was finicky and all that stuff, but it does work. And this is the other reason why I, I keep coming back to WPML, and that is that uh, as difficult as some things can be to translate, there is always a way to do it somehow. Um, another one of the issues I had was uh, there's a theme framework called Genesis. Uh, it adds the ability to have a custom post type archive page that neither WordPress nor WPML know about but there is a way to tell WordPress, uh, to tell WPML about it so that it can then be translated. So even if it's not something in the admin interface, you can do a little kung fu with the code and suddenly it shows up and it, it, it works. But yeah, I'm glad last week is over. Jonathan, issues, well, challenges? The challenge actually is not really on the technical level, and this happened a while back. Um, in the, uh, as laws change within the government and whatnot, we've got to obviously adapt to the laws. And one of the, adata uh, the, the, the big ab adaptation was that our HR site had to be translated. So at the beginning, we didn't have any French content, so therefore the HR uh, administrators and uh, individuals in HR, well, they basically just translated the content with their, uh, with their knowledge of French. And um, th that didn't exactly res uh, resound well with our, uh, with our prospective uh, career uh, people, with the, the people coming into the site that are looking for jobs and looking for uh, specific information from HR. Well, 
they're now finding grammatical errors in our French, French content. So uh, this was before communications had the team to do what they do right now. And um, so at that point, we actually had to go to external translators and do the, an official translation and at that point, uh, bill HR for the work. <laughs> but uh, so one of the key takeaways is that is that if you do know the second language but not complete, uh, completely know that second language, invest the time, invest the, the cash into doing a professional translation because at that point, it's just like your real content, it's just like your English content or your primary content. Um, at that point, that content is going to serve you a lot better with proper spelling, proper grammar, and proper punctuation because otherwise, um, you're just doing yourself a disservice. Do you Thanks. mind if I just add a couple of things? Of course not. Um, so a couple of things just occurred to me. Um, we're talking uh, about multi-site, about plugins like WPML for doing multilingual. If you're on WordPress.com, uh, you've actually now got fairly similar options. Uh, up until recently, multi-site was the only way to really do bilingual, trilingual, multilingual on WordPress.com. Uh, the WordCamp websites are actually all multi-sites, so that's how we do um, the, bi the bilingualism for the WordCamp websites. That's multi-site on WordPress.com. Uh, if you actually have a business plan on WordPress.com, very recently you've now been able to upload your own plugins, which includes WPML. Um, I've actually done that for a client recently. It works fairly well. I would just say uh, one caveat here is it's fairly new to be able to upload plugins on WordPress.com. So some of the plugins, there are, they're not built for the new editor. If you use WordPress.com, you've used the new editor, not the WP admin. I'm sure it has a name and I can't think of it. Calypso, Calypso thank you. Yes, so if you use the new Calypso editor on WordPress.com, um, one of the problems we had was actually our, language, our second language content kept disappearing uh, and the Calypso editor does not really work with WPML yet. So just a caveat, you can use plugins like WPML on WordPress.com now with a business plan, it's a paid plan. Um, but at least when I was doing this a few months ago, use the WP admin editor, not the Calypso editor. Thanks, yeah, there might be a few people here in WordPress.com that were interested in that, so it's a good point. I think there's a question up here, sir. Uh, it's just related to, uh, you mentioned Calypso and WordPress.com plugins. Uh, I'm wondering if you could give us an example of a plugin that you would use for translations with Gutenberg. So the question is, and it's a loaded one, what are we gonna use for translation with Gutenberg? Um, I'm going to take a first stack at it and say that I, I will assume and I think of no that, for example, WPML development team are hard at work already trying to make sure all these blocks um, can be found by their interface so that they can be translated. Of course, that is only one vendor. I can't speak for all of them. Perhaps uh, you guys have more information on other approaches as well. Of course, multi-site is multi-site, so that's never going to be an issue. Yeah, I think you've answered it yeah, there. Yeah, because with multi-site, what happens is that the post content is normal. And there's nothing, uh, even though WPML doesn't doesn't mangle it. Uh, site is on. So because multi-site, uh, yeah, because multi-site stores the post content as normal, and it's just a different site, and every site is its own language. What happens there is that um, it, with Gutenberg. If it works for English, it's going to do the exact same thing for French, and you're just literally changing the words at that point in the other site. So at that point, Gutenberg uh, shouldn't really be much of a problem in terms of multilingual if you're using it with uh, multi-site involved. Um, well, I, I have two answers. Uh, the first answer is that whenever Gutenberg launches, it's going to be a 1.0 product, and I don't put 1.0 products into production. So what I'm going to be doing is disabling it until version one point something comes out and they've figured out what the million plus users have found that's wrong with it. Um, that's the first answer. The second answer is, as was said, uh, I, I'm uh, one of the reasons why the buy once, use forever uh, plugin model doesn't work is that in year four, there's no revenue for the plugin author. 
And um, so when WPML switched from uh, the lifetime to the annual, I didn't really have a problem with that because I want them to have the money to be able to pay people to figure that stuff out for me so I don't have to think about it. But for me, Gutenberg will be disabled on every site I manage. Thank you. Um, there's one or two questions left. Uh, I think I'm going to go to the big one because we're starting of getting close to the end. We have to assume that having a multilingual website is going to require more work and therefore have an impact on a client's budget. How do you deal with that? How do you price that? How do you estimate the amount of work? Do you have rules of thumb? How do you do it? Uh, I just add another zero. <laughs> um, most people who are either coming from an existing site that has multiple languages in it, or they are trying to move to a site that has multiple languages in it, uh, they're usually pretty clear that it's going to cost more than just, hey, can you make my theme look better? How the process works, how you price it, that's a, a, a magical secret sauce of you know, what, what their budget is, how long I think it's going to take, how much content there is, um, what type of things need to be translated. Uh, it, it's, it's, there is no uh, form that I, that I can check things off in and out spits a number. It is, uh, as, is if you ask any uh, freelance developer, they'll tell you that they have a method, but it's not something that they can really articulate, and I'm sort of the same way. I mean, as Mike said, it's, um, it's very dependent on what the, the, the client's asking you for. I, it often depends uh, how much, uh, depends what exactly they're asking for. So if a client comes to me and they're like, I must use this theme for my new website, and I look at that theme, and it's not WPML compatible, which, as I say, is my preferred way of doing it. Uh, by the way, WPML has a page on the website where you can enter the name, author, whatever, of a theme. Is it also for plugins or just themes at the moment, the, the checker? I don't know, I never heard of that. That's okay. Cool. Yeah, they have a page on, basically, WPML has a certification process for themes. I'm not sure if it's also for plugins. It's both, it's plugins okay, and themes. Um, so they, you, a plugin or theme author can request that the WPML team looks over their plugin or theme uh, and checks that it is compatible. And if it is, it can be certified WPML compatible. WPML will add it to um, the database on their website, and you can search on their website to see whether a theme or plugin is fully compatible. If you're using something like Theme Forest, uh, a lot of Themes particularly will say WPML compatible, but if it doesn't have the WPML logo or you've not checked it on their um, website, be a little circumspect about it. So back to the original question: um, If I'm using, if I'm being asked to use a theme that isn't already WPML compatible, then I may have to spend time uh, making it so. Basically, if a theme has been properly localized. Uh, which means it's ready to be used in multiple languages, usually that's okay. But there's obviously a wide range of standards for themes and plugins. So do your homework before, like, know what you're letting yourself in for. Um, also, as Mike said, things like um, plugins, so advanced custom fields, etc. If you're creating your own custom fields, custom post types, etc., uh, custom archives, and so on. Uh, then there's a lot more work uh, involved because you may have to make sure everything is translatable, not just, oh, it will appear. So do your homework first before um, giving an estimate and find out what you're letting yourself in for. How does that impact the budget at Dawson if you decide to have a part of a website, bilingual or not? Well, the budgeting at that point would be definitely for the translation itself, the physical words being translated. Um, and in terms of budgeting at Dawson, what we do is mainly timelines as opposed to cost, because uh, at this point, what we generally do is we, pro we spec a project out, we, uh, we estimate time that it'll take, and then do we engage with the project or not, because of the fact that everything that we do at, within IT is basically just time-based, um, and we don't really have the, con well, we do, but 
we don't have the real concept of, of scoping projects out for, for dollar money amounts. Okay. But it's time that we're scoping out. Right. Okay. Well, before we open it up for questions, what I wanted to ask each of our three participants is a very simple one, is in one sentence, or less, if I can even say that, one <laughs> sentence. What's the one advice you'd give to people in this room embarking on making a site multilingual? One sentence. <laughs> www.codenamemikeD.com. Um, my, my advice would be what I closed with, uh, it's not going to be a sentence, it's going to be a paragraph. Uh, my advice would be what I closed with uh, yesterday, and that is the correct order if you're starting from scratch. Um, the correct order is do your taxonomy terms first, then do your posts and pages, then do your menus and widgets. So, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, plan out the content of the website, find out what the content is before you think about how you're going to build the site and make it multilingual. Yeah, see? Prepare yourself for pain, mis misery, and suffering. <laughs> no. WP it doesn't yeah, no, do no, that. No, 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 honestly, no, I'm joking. Uh, no, prepare yourself, no, but really prepare yourself for work, prepare yourself for uh, the time that it's going to take, and uh, obviously budget accordingly for that, uh, just because it's, it's, translation is a time-consuming effort to get that really done well. I'm just going to add one slightly random comment. Um, I don't know whether you know or not, but obviously WordPress can be installed in any different language, pretty much, I think, I don't know how many translations. 180 languages and dialects. Thank you. Thank you. Someone did the homework. Um, so uh, if your um, client is Francophone or they're a Spanish speaker, a Mandarin speaker, whatever, um, you can install it in that language and translate back. Also, using WPML, and you can um, choose the language of the dashboard for different users. So um, even if I've installed it in, in French for a client, I personally, in my user profile, will choose to view the dashboard in English, um, just because it makes my life generally a bit easier. Um, and also, if you're building a multilingual site, it's a good way to learn some of another language. I would say mm -hmm. a large percentage of uh, the French that I do know, certainly um, to read, uh, has come from building websites bilingually and using the WordPress interface in French. Thanks. So at this point, if there's any questions, if you want to feel free to raise your hand, and uh, you may even direct your question to a specific speaker if you wish to. Yes. So the question is, uh, we're doing three languages, one of which doesn't exist in the WordPress world. How can we tackle that? Am I getting it right? Yeah. I can tell you how I would tackle it. Um, you, I'm going to assume that the language you're choosing, or the language that you're using, is not uh, one of the languages available in WPML. Cree. Yeah. Well, I don't know if Cree is available in WPML or not. So we'll assume that it's not. Um, the way I would handle that is I would pick one of the languages you know that you're never going to be translating that content into. You set that as the language for Cree, and then go in and use the tools that are built into WPML that let you modify the strings within WPML itself to change the flag and change the, the languages to whatever it is you want them to be. Because really, there's only three things you'd need to change. You need to change the flag, uh, the localized name of the language and the English name of the language. And I believe that there are tools that let you do that. I know for a fact there's one that lets you change the flag. So that's, that's how I would do it, but I've, I've never done that, but that's just what comes to my mind. So another possibility might be talking to uh, WordPress Central and seeing if you can establish a new base language, but obviously that's going to take way more time than going Mike's route, because you'll have to go through some red tape. I'm just going to say one little thing. Mike brought up the uh, the flags. Um, so WPML by by default, I think, or maybe not anymore. But you can have a flag next to the language in the language switcher. Um, 
and it, like on a particularly, I'm talking from a Canadian perspective here, you don't have to have the British flag against English and the French flag against French. You could have, for example, the Canadian flag against the English and the Quebec flag against the, um, the French or whatever you like. So you can change that flag for something if you thought it's more appropriate. And some people dislike flags altogether because language is not equal to culture or political affiliation. So you have to be careful about that too. If somebody's um, French Canadian but a federalist political angle, then that blue and white flag may not go well with them. Yeah, I, I get rid of the flags. I never use the flags. Yeah, we never use the flags personally. Oui, une question? Je ne pense pas qu'il y a de meilleure extension. Je pourrais laisser nos panélistes répondre. C'est une extension, c'est une approche. Il y a WPML, il y a Multilingue, il y a Weglot, il y en a. Il y a des applications qui gardent votre contenu sur votre site. Ça, c'est une autre question qu'on n'a pas posée, mais il y a des applications également qui travaillent en SaaS ou en cloud et vous, vos traductions sont hébergées sur un site qui n'est pas le vôtre et que vous accédez en temps réel quand le site est vu. Alors, est-ce que c'est une bonne idée ou une mauvaise idée? Il y a probablement entre 10 et 15 plugins et approches différentes de multilinguisme. WPML, c'est juste que c'est une des plus connues. C'est la meilleure, je ne pense pas qu'il y en a de meilleure. Ma présentation était hier après-midi. <laughs> It'll be on WPTV uh, soon, WordPress.tv soon, so you can catch up on it. Oui, on monte, on monte tout ça et tu pourras venir me voir, ça me fera plaisir de t'expliquer. Yes. Um, so, ho like basically, a homepage selector for the language, and then you—it's a splash page actually. It's, uh, splash pages nowadays are definitely not the fad. Um, if you're building a brand new site with a splash page, and the client wants the splash page, I would highly re not recommend it because of uh, the extra click effect. Uh, also, the thing is, Google. Uh, is the preferred way that users are going to get to the content, therefore they're going to bypass the home page, the front door, the whatever you want to call it, therefore at that point they're going to land on the lowest uh, blog post. Uh, in fact, they might even land on a blog post from who knows how long ago. Uh, when, so that means at that point a splash page is actually not even in effect. And it's also not good for your SEO if that's your home page. The only place I ever see them now is on government sites. So if you log in to check your tax information or whatever, but that's because they know you have to come through the front door. You can't get at your tax information page without going through the front door first. So um, as far as the extra click, if you arrive on the English site and you're French, it's an extra click anyway. So it's not a, it, for me, it's not really necessarily a question of the extra click. Um, there are ways in uh, these plugins so that the plugin can detect the language of your browser and automatically send you to that correct language anyway, if, as long, if you turn that on. Um, but really, they're just ugly. And uh, uh, they, they serve a specific purpose in specific instances where you control the user experience from start to end. Like a bank, for example. If you go to your login page for your bank, you have to go through the login page. And so there's a, a, thing, a thing there that says, do you want to do, do this in French instead? But for normal sites, as you're saying, yeah. the, the front page, I, I would wager that probably 90% of the visitors to a particular website never even see the front page. I know we're almost out of time, but I'm just going to add one little thing. Uh, one other pitfall that I often see with uh, multilingual sites, particularly WPML, because you can add the language switcher to the menu, is when it goes into mobile view, so you get the hamburger menu or whatever, often it puts your, mo your language switcher in the mobile menu. Don't do that. It's horrible to try and then switch language. So do check your site when you're doing this um, on mobile, tablet, whatever, uh, and check that your language switcher is still accessible, easily accessible. It should still be, ideally, top right corner. On a le temps pour une dernière question. Last question. 
Deux, peut-être, si c'est rapide. Oui. <laughs> the WPML support forum, uh, it's really good. That's where a lot of people ask their questions. You can see the replies. The WPML uh, support is very good. Uh, they do get back to you pretty quickly and they most of the time are able to uh, help resolve the issue. Sometimes it really is an incompatibility and short of going to the other plugin author and, and asking them to help resolve it. But usually the support forums are, I would say, solve maybe 75% of those sort of compatibility issues that I've had. And they are much better in like the last year or so than um, prior to that. Like sometimes you'd update the plugin or WPML and it would break. Um, and that's gotten a lot better. I think the WPML team are much more on it now. And that's the way to solve issues once you find them. But even better is try to prevent them. So I, I will give you this piece of advice. Whenever we look at a project that needs to be bilingual, my, uh, multilingual, which is a majority of the time, we'll first decide on an approach based on a client's criteria and uh, technical uh, requirements. Once we decide on the approach, the second phase is going to be based on the functionality required. Do uh, look for what kind of plugins you're going to be using to build the site and make sure those plugins are compatible and sometimes go even as far as test them before finalizing your quote to a client. That's, to me, that's part of a technical solution build and uh, making sure that whatever you deliver is gonna work before you actually get to installing things. Do you have another question? Yeah, I'll the question. Oh. yeah, the question is basically what are the preferred methods for um, uh, implementing a language switcher? Do we list all the options? Do we list the other options, excluding the one language on which we're already on? So the thing is with the language switchers, you generally want to list the language. What we do is we list the languages, like all the languages is in the language that you're going to, so therefore, like the language that you're on. So therefore, if you're on the English site, you'd be listing the languages in English. If you're on the French site, you're listing all the languages in French, and you're from the Mandarin site, you're listing all the languages in Mandarin. And this... Yeah. But the thing is, if you're, in, <laughs> if you're on Mandarin site, how can, and you can't read the English, you can't word the read, read you can't understand the word English. Yes. So yeah. on the French site, um, it would be anglais as opposed to English. So if you're on the French site, you would see the word anglais and française. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. It's the other way around. Yeah. Other way around. Yeah. So regardless, we're we're catering to the user in their language. And by the way, no flags. Yeah, no flags. Definitely no flags. We're catering to the user in their language. So yeah, personally, uh, my preference is always to just use the two-letter um, language code. So I always have, if I'm on the English site, it'll just have FR in the corner. If I'm on the French site, it'll have uh, EN. If I'm on Spanish, it'll have ES. Uh, sorry, no, if, I'm, if there is a third language, it would be, say, ES. Um, and I just have those uh, two-letter codes, no flags. Uh, for me, it depends on how much space I have. So if I've got... Um, s something in English that's you know, I've got a logo and then I've got a menu and it's very tight then as soon as I flip the French it's going to be longer so I have to account for that somewhere so 
that's when the two let, the two letter language codes come up. I never use flags, um, but I always show both languages, the current language and the one that I can switch to. And like you like like you were saying, whenever there is uh, so the, the site I was talking about earlier, I think we're going to end up with seven languages. And each of them will be in their native language. So you, you look at the drop down, and if you want to go to the, the, uh, the Chinese uh, part of the site, it'll be written out in the Chinese character set for the reasons that you mentioned. So three people, three different answers. There you have it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for attending. Thanks to our panelists. If you have any other questions, we'll stick around for a few minutes.